This is Metabolic Radio, the podcast dedicated to keeping you informed when it comes to everything fitness. My name is Taylor Rampey, and with the help of my co-host Shane Pace, we aim to expose the truths about the health and fitness industry. The information and suggestions given in this podcast should not be considered as clinical or medical advice. Consult with a physician before implementing any information provided on this podcast. So in one of the uh, past episodes we just recorded, wow. you were talking about um, some issues you had with personal trainers. And I want you to elaborate on that. <laughs> because I think it, well, we, we've I, touched the, upon it in the past when we've, we have, we've talked about not in depth, how to look for a good trainer. But there's probably components that we're going to cover in this that's not, that weren't in that episode. Well, and see, okay, so, so I guess, again, even though we talked about this earlier, I started training and... and um, training people before their certifications um so my my perspective is a lot different when it comes to certifications than than most people that would deal with this kind of thing because i think i think again we talked a little bit about bro science we've talked about a few things and bro science was much bigger back in my time period because well that's all there was that's what i'm saying the science behind it was almost yeah the the earliest studies training certification organization no uh it, I don't know when their original certification started for trainers, but the organization, the oldest organization that I know of is the American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM, mm-hmm. and they've been around since 54. But, but I don't know they about... They didn't have a cert. I don't, I that's that. what I'm saying. I don't know if they had a PT cert, a personal I, I trainer know, cert. I know that they did in the 70s. And then there's, uh, I think it was... I look it up. NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Association, was in the 78, I believe. I could be wrong. I think that's the one. And you, then you've got ISSA intrigued. came around in the 80s, and then a bunch of them started popping up in the 80s and 90s. And in any, if you are true, which I'm not saying is a big if because you're probably true, um, they were very, very not known about. So I, I talked for two seconds while I look this up because I'm going to actually check. Well, so I'm, ju- I'm just curious um, what topics you want to talk or what aspects of personal trainers you want to talk about because i know that you have some strong feelings about them um even though we're both trainers as well but trainers in general when you're talking about education levels regulations or lack thereof in the industry um training and coaching um modalities and methods and um, specialization versus generalized trainers so those are some topics that i want to cover right right and i and yeah i'm almost I'm almost 100 percent positive on those dates. Like, well, you know, I believe I, I absolutely believe. <laughs> just you. say, you know. In fact, I know which article I pulled them from. But what just, are you what are you looking for? I'm just trying to figure out, dude. Just attached to my Wi-Fi. He's on his tablet. It's not connecting to it. I don't know. Well, doesn't yeah, matter. Screw it. I'm not gonna look it up. It's around those dates. Yeah, and I, like I said, I believe you. I, so, like I, I said, I don't know when the guys. official personal training certification started with those organizations, but that's how long they've been around. Right, and that studying makes sense. that type of stuff. I, I thought the first one was in the '90s, in the beginning of the '90s, but that, that, irrelevant. I guess it's irrelevant. So, so, um, gosh, what to say? So, so. Okay, specialization, in my opinion, is 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 is, is necessary. I'm not going to deny that. We talk. Uh, in fairness, you guys are coming into this midway in our conversation, and we're trying not to do that. And that's the reason why we're kind of starting this without having a a basis on that. Um, well, Shane was just bringing up some good points outside of uh, being live on the recording, and and so I we stopped the conversation because I wanted to record it because I think there's some some good stuff to cover uh, for you as as consumers and listeners to know about the training industry and about trainers and uh, different modalities and education levels and regulations. I think it's something that is important. This is, this is metabolic radio fitness exposed. I'm trying to expose things. We are trying to expose things about the fitness industry that is not common knowledge um, so that you can be better informed. And that's right. what this is about. So that's why I wanted to have us record it. No. And, and, and like I said, I, I agree with, 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 with just kind of jumping in and talking about it. I just, now I have one thing I want to know because I've you've got me. Well, you can look it up later. <laughs> I can't. Yes, you can. I, I should, but I can't. Um, 
You're the one that wanted to talk about this. So. Yes. No. You're right. So. So. What's so. The... so let, let, let's let me talk about my opinions on on personal trainers overall. I I, I think, and 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 this is not a butchery on anybody, and I I don't want anybody to feel that way. But my problem is, is most of them don't know what they're doing. Is my opinion, and I and I I, it's not the certification's fault, um, but I think base certification doesn't mean anything. I think most certifications are um, almost trivial to get um, in reality, just for the simple fact that. Uh, it sets up a person. Oh, that's not even fair. I, I want to say to fail, but that's not that's not true. It, that's not true. No, that's not true at that's all. That's Exactly how I started. Yes, and 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 you know that I believe in you. Yeah. But but uh, I'm not, and I know you don't doubt me. But I, no, I'm right. Just, you know me. I'm gonna play the other side here, which is very fair because you should because that's why I wanted to have this discussion. Um, but I, I feel like they stop educating themselves, and I think that they don't understand what to look for. When we were talking about scoliotic patterns and things like that, you know, I'm not putting anybody down, especially yourself, when it's dealing with that kind of stuff. But they don't try and educate. See, you're you're a little different on on this on the uh, on the personal trainer side. Most seem to stop their progression once they get certified. I definitely could see that yeah. and 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 i have an i have a pretty massive issue with that to be honest my yeah. my my education as you know is extremely wide based and and a lot of it's self-educated i i didn't do much uh, formal education especially with training and you know that um but i've read or studied or researched um an astronomical amount of stuff dealing with training and 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 my problem with this is is I don't get how these guys can go in and become trainers or gals can go in and become trainers and just not continue that education. I don't understand why people would even want to go to that. There's a few reasons. One, uh, people who, some people who get certified are just interested in learning more about fitness. I agree with that. Okay. Because they're fitness enthusiasts. So they get certified because they want to be on that level of knowledge for their Mm -hmm. own personal results. Right. Other people, and I, I don't have a problem. With that. No, it's not. It's not. But sometimes they end up training because they make money. And this is my next point: is that you, becoming a certified personal trainer is relatively easy compared to finishing a four-year degree, which will also qualify you to be a trainer and what, a far more educated one. But um, it's not because the industry isn't regulated. It's a very easy way to get into an industry where you can charge a lot of money and make a lot of money part time. And that was not my initial, but it was my second motivation for getting into the industry right. with, through that mo- through that method. Because I went, you know, I'll just be honest. I went from from making eight fifty an hour to making um, what I made in a in a forty fifty hour work week. I was making that in um, a third of the time. Right. Who wouldn't do that? Right. Okay. So, so that's that's one of the motivations is money. So people just get certified to get into game, make money. Why would they? Why are they going to spend more money on more certifications if they just care about making money? See, I don't they're not going to. But, but that's but that's but that, to me that's irrelevant. I, I think the, the fact is is okay. So so, what is the basis for getting a personal trainer? On the side of the person, not so getting the trainer. A, wait, getting a certification no, or buying a personal trainer? No, getting a personal trainer. Okay. Hiring one. What, why do people go to them? Because they assume that they have the amount of education they need to teach them to get results. Right. And so I don't understand why a personal trainer. And, see, and, and this, is, this is me talking from an, a perspective of, of what, how I look at it. And again, I guess I, mine's extremely skewed, as is yours technically. Because yeah. I don't understand why somebody could even feel like they could train somebody if they didn't start looking for like deviations and understanding um, um, certain aspects. And, and they've got to realize it. They don't care about the client more than they care about money. That's what I'm saying. And that's my, and I, I'm not saying and I'm not saying every trainer and I'm not saying right, and I get maybe that. not even the majority because because there's there's a there isn't a, there is an initial motivation to get a train for a trainer to to want to get certified. Right. And so I cannot say uh, based off any real evidence that the majority of trainers are financially motivated. Right. I'm sure that's a factor, but usually people that that strive to get higher education have some passion for that's the article is that the pt uh dc 1978 yeah that's that's that's, that's a first, good that's a good resource first, that's where i'm talking the about the first year was 1978 that's acsm right and it's or, or no uh, NSCA. that was when it was established so this is a business relation yeah anyway so 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 you have you have fitness enthusiasts who just want to learn more and 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 those people make great trainers but they often don't care to be a trainer sometimes they're that's they have a they're 
some other specialty or they have a marketing degree or they, they, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter who they are or what education they have, but they typically will have another job and then they're just a fitness enthusiast. Right. Or these could be like I have a friend who is an exceptional physical therapist who is a personal trainer as well. He doesn't train people. Right. He only does physical therapy, but right. he's very intelligent based off right. that knowledge to be a personal trainer. Then you have the financially motivated people, which I think is probably solely money motivated people. I think is probably not the norm. Those people typically would go into more of a sales manager position in the fitness industry because right. they probably make more money that way, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's people that um, are interested in fitness, think they want to be trainers, want to help people. They get into it and they realize how hard it is because it's commission-based and they don't make a lot of money. And then they they kind of they, – they either fizzle out and they quit. Right. And so, of course, they're not going to further educate themselves. And then there's people that do the same thing but, but um, make enough to get by. But not enough that they want to that, that, that they want to reinvest in that education. Right. So they say, okay, I'm making more than I would without this education, or you know, I don't really want to do anything else. This job is comfortable. They get comfortable, and then they get they 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 get um, stagnant and um, I would say they were complacent. Dressed. That's the word I'm looking for. Complacent. So they're like, okay, this is good enough for me. I'm making decent money. I don't really want to reinvest in anything because it's still kind of hard to you know pay bills but it's like i'm making more than i would without it so i'm just gonna kind of stay right where i'm at and then it just be kind of comes complacency yeah See, I, I just, and, I, and I, then I you have the trainers like that, though. I, I just that blows my mind that somebody could even be like that to me to me the education aspects to be able to like you like the fact that you know gate patterns and things um is something that the majority of trainers really can't use that is an absolute tool that is almost a necessity can't use don't have don't. The knowledge to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I said it wrong, yeah. so I apologize about that. But because you could use it if right. you had the knowledge. And 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 I will tell you, people, this is probably more of a episode for uh, us. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully it's going to be good for you guys. But, but so two two other categories I want to cover is so then we got we got up to the person that 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 um, gets complacent, right? Right. So you kind of have you you got all those other subcategories below it. The next thing would be someone who truly does have a passion that wants to help people. Okay? Yes, and that's a different person. That's a breed. But. This person thinks they already know everything. Okay. Or not necessarily think – has the arrogance to say they know everything, but they don't realize there's more to learn, so they don't pursue it. Right. Okay. Um, continuing education in the training industry is optional. Like there are no – there is no regulation that says you have to have a certification in order to train people legally right. now most gyms right. nowadays require a certification and usually the most widely On accepted level. is it nasm and and they usually only accept other accredited certifications um but you how many how many people how many managers really double check after they've hired a trainer that they're re-upping their continuing education Great. probably only Great. gyms or studios that really truly care about results uh, and, and their clients and then you and so those people sometimes will just kind of say I, I've got this base knowledge I know what I'm talking about in this realm and I'm helping people and that's great um, but they don't really have necessarily a drive to learn more or a reason to learn more based off requirement and then the last category I would say are the the best of the best and these are people who are driven okay they want to help people okay. they love to learn I they're agree with they're that. they're I obsessive agree with about that. learning absolutely i guess i can see that and and even if these people don't have a lot of experience they will they, they get they get asked a question they're not the kind of trainer that's just going to like rub it off and be like that's not important or oh this they're going to say you know what i don't really know the answer to that but i'm going to go find out for you because i want to know myself as well and they'll go to any resource they can they'll they'll they'll, they'll look for research they'll talk to professionals they'll go to a doctor that they know or some or a massage therapist that they know like they'll they'll seek advice and they'll bring that back to that back to that client right because they want to help them so much these are the kind of trainers that will often give unintentionally or intentionally they will give away a lot of their time they will give much of their free time to research and bettering themselves i would, I would agree with that for sure and that is the kind of trainer that you want to identify no and, 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 that, and makes, hire. that makes sense but, but but that is the minority so i, I agree with that and i'm not going to hit any specific um education process in this but but here's my problem with this too is having looked at a couple of certs because i haven't looked at just one um i feel they're lacking like crazy in their education i think their education well, to it's get a because they're not regulated small. the only regulation for a nationally accredited certification is a third party audit from the ncca or the detc which is now the deac i think right right and uh, i don't know yes, what's I honest right i mean it's, it's good that they're held to a standard but is their standard sufficient i don't, don't think, know well i think it's sufficient but I don't think it's it, adequate or, or, it's or not, optimal. It's not optimal. Yeah. But I think it's sufficient to actually get them started. Like I said, the majority of the time, 
um, in my opinion, from training somebody is is when you're in, in the trenches and you're figuring stuff out. Okay, so so me, I'm not like I said, I'm not wanting to hack trainers, but <clears throat> and I'm not wanting to hack anybody specifically on this at all. But but let's take an example of bodybuilders. So you, you get a guy who's lifted and, and 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 worked his butt off to get himself in in what he would classify as the best shape of his life, which is 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 a is a perspective thing in my opinion because just because he looks a specific way doesn't necessarily mean he's great, in great shape, but just because that worked for him doesn't mean it's going to work for the next guy. I, I have a, I know someone um, that was trained, and he, don't get me wrong, when he was competing, because he competed okay, on stage and he was winning, um, he was winning and he looked ripped, but he wasn't developed right. You know, He was lacking in certain body parts, but he was training exactly like somebody else who didn't have that same problem. It's not the way he should be training, right? Yeah. And, and I feel like the majority of trainers, especially after they just get certified, they, they, that's how they are. Yeah. Does that make sense? And, and I, think, I think it's a massive, massive hole in the fitness world because we have so many crappy trainers. You know, and, and, and if you are, bluntly, if you are a crappy trainer, stop being one. I, go out and start learning stuff. But, but that's my issue with this, dude. And that's the reason why I thought, you know what? We probably ought to talk about this in more yeah. detail. Well, the, the problem is there's not a universal standard. Um, it's hard to, though. So, so in, in fairness, though... The science has changed so blasted fast; it's hard to. Yeah, but but so let, here here's the thing: there there's one standard that it, that it, it's optional, but you can hold yourself to it as a trainer. Is if you want to keep your certification active, you have to recertify every two years right. for almost every organization. Well, you have to have and you have to have CPR and AED. Yes, and um um, so those those things are important. Um, but well, yeah, massage therapy. In order to involved, recertify, right? you don't, you don't just pay a fee. You do pay a fee, but you have to acquire a certain amount of continuing education education credits. credits. Usually, it's around twenty hours. Right. Uh, what is considered twenty hours? So that's usually one additional certification, a specialty cert like nutrition or a kettlebell certification, or, or just depending on which certification we're talking about. There's right. there's hundreds, if not probably thousands, of specialty certs. Um, but you need to acquire. You know, additional continuing ed to keep your certification active. So if I want to say, hey, I'm a I'm a ACSM certified trainer, then I need to be certified in ACSM and then recertify and get continuing ed every t- two years. That makes sense. Not everyone does. And how is someone going to regulate? I mean, it's it's if 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 um, I've let certifications lapse before, right? right? So so how is that organization supposed to know? You know, they'd have to go and audit all of their trainers right. to see if they're actually still active. And I know that they, for a fact, that they don't do that on a certain basis because, um, well, I guess okay, they do know who has who has lapsed. Well, of course, there's no enforcement to recertify. They just right. basically say, "All right, you're no longer certified with us. You have to recert if you want." But it, you, you, these people can still market themselves as that. You know, I was once ACSM certified. Mm-hmm. Like how it's going to be very difficult for them to regulate and find out that that person's not active with ACSM or right. whatever organization. Right. Um, and so that's that's what can be deceptive is. You can acquire a certain level of education to market yourself a certain way, but you're not necessarily you're not necessarily as educated as another person right. um, who who is keeping up on those continuing education credits because those credits are optional. Most training positions, unless you're self employed, uh, will require an active cert. But again, it depends on that company to really check and see if their trainers are actively certified. Right. Um, that is is a liability issue for businesses. And potential. So if, a potential. Liability. If there's if they're employees, um, as I said, it's a potential. Yeah, until it's, done. it's you want to be careful with that. But. Of course, you have. So to if you happen to be a personal, it can become one. That's the that's the problem. If you're a personal trainer that's self-employed or employed by um, a gym or a business or a studio or whatever, uh, whether you're a contractor or, or an employee, you should look at the legalities of your insurance if you have it, and if you don't, you should get some, and mm-hmm. you should be certified when you have it too, um, because if you do happen to injure somebody, which is Major injury usually is typically rare if you're a decent trainer, um, but if that happens, that's a big problem for. I mean, Everybody. not just to protect yourself, but protect them. You're to protect, to protect your people. client. I mean, Absolutely. let's be honest. I agree with that the reason I carry over. personal trainer insurance, like, yeah, as as like a liability, like safety net. But honestly, it's so that the person who gets injured can have money to pay bills. And, you know what I'm and saying? Should and yeah. should and, and and yeah, and I agree with that. But we've already talked about that, and you can technically insurance if you're not if you you're can. not certified. It's more expensive, but you can. Yeah. So so, but okay. So we were talking <laughs> briefly, and this is when you wanted to jump into this. Sorry, I totally sidetracked us. No, you didn't actually. This is this is like I said. This is what I, I kind of wanted to talk about this because this is something I've been in the back of my head wanting to talk about for a while. But so so here's here's something that uh, I started to hit on, and I'm not going to go into it like we were. 
Um, but uh, when somebody specialized, you said you had points on that before we actually had this discussion on online. So say what you had said about well, specialization. I, when, when I'm saying if somebody goes in and, and they're training somebody and they're trying – I didn't, I didn't clarify the question enough when we were talking about it before. But let's say that they are doing a specific um, exercise routine – Type type routine, not routine, but type of routine. Every time they train somebody, you know, same concept, same same processes. You know, they use hit training, whatever, um, and they're very specific in it. Modality, Unless, I think, yeah, is the mo- word. Yeah. Modality is like, it, yeah, modality is definitely a style because it's a style. But um, what is the point? Because if if let's say somebody's going on stage to compete, female or male, it doesn't even matter. Um, if they do exclusively hit training, it's not going to train them completely. If they do ex- ex- exclusively weight training, it may, depending on what they're doing, but they can have better benefits if they, if, if they use Combined more different options. Yeah. So, so what's the benefit in that specific category, since I didn't, like I said, I didn't go into detail enough, to, to have someone who does that specific of a thing? What is the benefit of a specialist? All the time, using a specialist, yes. Well, here's the thing. They, if you're a specialist... You should work with a specialized population. I agree with that. Okay, if you are, especially if it's injury, if you then, are certified, it. like let's put an example in here. Let's say you get personal trainer certified, and then you get tactical trainer spe- uh, certified, which NSCA offers a tactical training cert. You should be working with firefighters, policemen, military, which makes sense, and that should be your clientele. No, that that okay. does make now, sense. Now, is, is there some general bit. carryover for general fitness training? Could could you train a normal person under certain certain? conditions of the of what you're educated in of your specialty yeah and they would still see results then you take um someone who uh uh specialty cert can't think kettlebells right okay okay so you say you take a kettlebell specialist and they say this is what i do i do kettlebell that is pretty much how i train everybody you're gonna need you ought to work with a clientele that is seeking specifically that type of training or that would benefit from that type of training based off of what you know now i don't know very much about kettlebell let's be honest I, the, the, I the extent of my kettlebell myself. education i use and that's about a kettlebell swing yeah. and that's it because i just yeah, i don't it doesn't interest it. me i'm not saying it's not good it just doesn't interest me well and i, I, I want so, to know more about it so i'm I, sure I there's I'm looking tons at. of benefits stabilization coordination um core like like a turkish getup like crap I, I suck at those you know what i mean but is that probably an exceptional exercise for that has different applications yeah i, I mean i don't even know all the applications but it makes sense but that could be a specialization that someone could use under specific circumstances so you know it's the idea that trainers need to have a general knowledge about many things yes but when you don't work with a specialist you're just working with an average trainer not necessarily though dude I mean, I, no, I won't say that as a, an no, entirely all inclusive statement. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be semi arrogant in this for for two seconds, and I'm good at training people. Okay, but I, I'm not a specialist at any means. I don't specialize I'm sure, in anything. Uh, I think you're selling yourself short there, based off of what you researched. Like you don't carry a whole lot of certifications, right? But based off of how what you seek information about will make you specialize and gravitate towards some area. Well, and you're right. I know a little bit about kettlebells. I know a little bit about TRX. Um, so I don't specialize in some. I wouldn't be able to specialize. In it, maybe like it's that, not even a training modality. Maybe it's um, uh, hormones or I don't know some topic. Like like I my specialization would be nutrition. Really, if you look at if you look at what I study. Okay. If you look I, at I my certifications, that yeah, that's, that's true what research. where I lean towards. Right. So, um, but 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 but, but it, typically. If you take someone who just has a personal trainer certification, we're just talking certs. We're not talking necessarily research. Outside education. Yeah, right. right? If they just have a personal training cert, they're, let's be honest, they're just a personal trainer unless they prove themselves through other means that they have, agree with that. have a different level. And I so, so I agree on that point. But so if you're looking for a personal trainer, you don't want someone – it depends on where you're at, okay? I give you that. You don't necessarily want someone who's just generally certified. Okay. Now, someone who's just starting on a training, That's who has never touched weights, who's who's um, not necessarily a super big health risk or or has special, special needs or isn't recovering from an injury, that type of person just needs some general fitness education. And a, a personal trainer in general would be great for them. But someone who has multiple injuries I would, I would, needs I, an exercise therapist. You're, you're, where you're going, I agree with. I, I, want, I want to stop and, and throw this in there, though. I, so my, my, my thought process at that point is 
a general uh, personal trainer sucks for the average person because I don't think they educate them. I think they throw out. So then, why are you saying specialists they, suck? I'm saying that the general. I'm saying a normal everyday trainer, the, the average trainer that you walk into a gym and you talk to, isn't going to be that great. I opinion. agree with you, and and that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying. No, you, but I thought you had said. Gen, uh, uh, a trainer who is specialized is not as good as someone who has a, a gen overview knowledge. And I had, and, and you, I, 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 okay. I, I just clarifying. No, you're right, that. and I and I probably cut you off before I should have. But I was saying that that, and I and I want to do this for clarification too. Is is when you start talking about an average trainer, and I guess that's what I'm I'm kind of differentiating because it's not general knowledge; it's, it's an average trainer. Okay, I think I think. A large percentage of them are are not worth the money they're paying. Them. I agree with you, and and I have a problem with that. You know, I I think I I feel bad because I feel like um, the average person, especially like we're talking to uh, in the podcast, it, they're, they're the. In fact, let's take an example. Of what you're talking about with with uh, medical people in the last uh, uh, podcast we, we we were airing, um, they should educate people. They, the the yeah, drive should yeah. be to make it so they're informed. And I don't think almost any trainers do that. No, I very few. I, I think the qualities of the trainer you should seek are um, they should have a certain level of traditional education. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I would because, say, but, I would it, say on but the what's average, more important, on the average, what's right. more important is how they apply what knowledge they have. Agreed, no okay? question. Right. Because it doesn't matter how, how many letters you have after your name. It doesn't matter if you have a degree or not. Right in that specific specific field, it's a matter of what you know and how you apply it. I agree with that. Um, because great. I've some of the best trainers I've met have had carried zero certifications, and some of the the worst trainers I've met have all a laundry list of them, and they and they're terrible. Like because sometimes you you get and I'm speaking in radical Generals. you know ultimatum statements, but I'm, right. you know it's generalization. This isn't always true, but when I've run into those cases, um, a certain level of education. Uh, can develop arrogance. Oh yeah, and to the point where they're like, oh, "I know sure. it all. I don't need any more certs. I know all the science. Um, uh, I know what's best for you." And and open mindedness goes out the window. So the best personal trainer, the top of the top, which is very rare, is going to be objective and open minded. Mm -hmm. They're going to be obsessive about learning. They're going to love learning about their industry. I would agree. They're with going that, to stay up to date sure. with all the most recent research, mm -hmm. or at least try to, because right. research comes out. In, in exponential amounts. Oh, yeah. Um, Multiple things in a day. Yeah, they're going to know how to apply their knowledge. Yes. Um, they're going to be versatile, okay? And they're going to remain objective. And they're going to be a coach, not just a trainer. There's I a agree big with difference that. between a coach, coach and, and a trainer. trainer. Absolutely. I agree There's with a that. book that I read for a class, and I think it's called The Secret, The Something Seven Secrets, I think, to mm -hmm. Successful Coaches. Yeah. Short read. You could read it in a day. It, I don't even remember who wrote it, but it's exceptional. It talks about. What, and it's mostly in orientation to like sports coaching, but mm -hmm. it totally applies because a trainer is going to work with, uh, unless they're a super, super specialist, they're going to work with kids, adolescents. They're going to work with young adults. They're going to work with injuries. They're going to work with diabetes. They're going to yes. work with health conditions. That's they're going to work saying. with elderly, middle-aged. That's what I'm thinking a general knowledge base on everything is going to be more important yeah. overall than so a I'm specialist. Saying if they're not a specialist, then they're going to work with anyone in those populations yes, and more. And um, and they need to know how to be adaptive to that person. Absolutely. Okay. However, if you're like, hey, I want to do a competition. Uh, well, I'm not going to use that analogy because I, I don't necessarily. That's different. I would yeah, say we'll have another conversation about competition. You, you can industry. talk athletic endeavors. You yeah. can talk okay, let's resources. Say I, perfect example that is used in a podcast we listen to. I want to um, compete in, in Olympic lifting. Okay. Okay. Are you going to go to a general trainer for that, or are you no. going to go to an Olympic lifting coach? Way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. right. Yeah, so, because, so it depends on your goal. That's really going to determine whether you need a general or a specialist, right? Because they and, both can be good, and they both like if I'm if I am recovering from a rotator cuff surgery, I probably don't want to go to an Olympic lifting specialist. Oh, I probably no. want to go to an exercise therapist that's, that gets referrals from which, a, from which a physical I agree therapist. With that. I agree with that completely. You're right on that, and, and but I do want to clarify this since we're talking to each other, but I, we're, we're airing this. Um, Olympic lifts are so detailed that and we've talked about this before anyway, but they're so detailed in their their their, uh, their movements that unless the guy's done it excessively himself, yeah, um, and and he pretty much has to have done it excessively himself because he's got to understand the dynamics of yeah. it, and 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 has had a lot of training as well on top of that. 
the odds of them being able to train somebody else to do an Olympic lift is almost zero. You know, that's why that's why when we talked CrossFit earlier, um, CrossFit has a massive hole because most of those guys have no stinking clue how to yeah. do an Olympic lift, and that's all their movements really are based yeah. on. Yeah, which is crazy and easy to me. You would consider, I mean, they're not accredited, but that's a general certification. Yeah, they have a cert. Right. So it it just kind of depends on what what population you're talking about. No, I agree with that. Let's say someone who is an Olympic lifter who has competed, who maybe even certified themselves wants a coach or a trainer they could go to crossfit because they have their own level of knowledge Absolutely. and they just need a general trainer. Well, they don't need to pay for a specialist i and i agree with that and i'm going to tell you there's there's crossfit trainers out there that are absolute beasts for this and they can actually do it and and there's great crossfit trainers that will will be able to keep their their uh, their people from getting really damaged and let's in the process. be let's That's be rare. fair too just because you're a crossfit trainer or maybe you market yourself as such does not mean you're a bad trainer agreed it just me. It, 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 many of these trainers have other certifications yes. and may have good backgrounds. Absolutely, and I, but I'm CrossFit not happy CrossFit itself CrossFit. as a modality and how it's traditionally trained is very risky, dangerous, and, and the certification by itself is not that great. Anymore. Right, right, and that's. The, I mean, that, I guess that to an extent when we started talking about this stuff is is why I was like, gosh, man, we probably should talk about this in another episode because the reality is, you know, when we start talking about uh, uh, the average person, anybody out there. The majority of them have scoliosis. Almost nobody thinks they have scoliosis. Almost everybody has scoliosis to a point. Okay, just because, like I said, if you have a high shoulder, you have to have scoliosis because your 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 back's going to move because of it. Yeah, it, it's it has to be that way. So so as a trainer, you should be able to recognize that. And if you don't, bluntly, in my opinion, that's a problem because you're gonna you're gonna exacerbate that problem. So you're getting to the. The, the argument of that that there's not a, a, a high enough or a universal enough standard across certification without question i believe yeah, that yeah. without question and i, I agree that. i would i would i think that, i don't think they're worth nothing but i think that you're right that there should be a well, higher standards and and, and and you're right and, and do i think they're worth nothing no okay and i want that clear too because um a certification gives a standard at least that they've studied something and that they have at least a desire to learn up to that point. Not necessarily, because I think you can go in and pass a test fast if you have a memorization thing, and that doesn't mean you know anything. Uh, you it can, depends. You can cram for it an depends. exam there's, and pass there's it in a, a day. Yeah, but a lot of exams have case studies. Case studies change the dynamics a little bit. Yeah. But but again, like my exercise therapy cert is exclusively case studies. I actually was surprised. There was one section on like, and it was small, like probably forty questions right. on multiple choice. I think, right, right, and that was it. And everything else is like situational and like paragraph and right. essay question, right? Which is so what I, would be. I excel with that kind of stuff. But it just it I just think, depends but... on the certification. No, I some guess of them you're right. Sense. They're all they're all memorization, right? Or and, and, could that's, be. and that's and that's the thing is is I think that the, that the problem I've got with 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 uh, personal trainer for the average person is, is is like we talked about. Okay, so so I guess let's be fair. I'm I'm going to step back again, but um, like you talked about when you were talking about uh, lo- signs to look for, you need to watch what they do. Yeah. If you can't watch what they do, you need to have a conversation with them and find out what they seem to know. And, and, and if you're not educating yourself, which thankfully I think everybody that listens to us is trying to do that, yeah. okay? I'm not hacking any other podcast that's out there, you know, what they say or don't say, I'm not worried about that. But what I'm going to tell you is I think that everybody that's trying to listen to us because we're looking for this information and we want to make sure that we're not wrong. And if we are wrong, we come back and respond to it as often as we possibly can. We're not, we're going to miss stuff that yeah. we didn't know, but, but we're trying to do that and we're trying to share it because we want them to be educated. Okay. So when you have that education and you go and you sit down and you talk to a personal trainer, you should be feeling for how they are in my opinion. And I think, I think that the, the problem is, is most of these people see movements and they see a guy that has energy and they see all this other crap. And I don't think that makes him a good trainer. It's an aspect of a good trainer, but it doesn't necessarily... It's a potential of a good... It's not necessarily Actually, I'll say of aspect. a coach, not even of a trainer. Because... Explain the ability, that, because like, I'm curious to know what you mean by that. The ability to motivate, influence, energize, that's coaching. Okay, I agree with that. That has nothing to with do that. with your academic or with book that. knowledge of actual sure. training concepts or yes. nutrition or whatever right. we're talking about. But is it an essential component, in my opinion? Yeah. If you it want... Can to, if you want, It can be. It depends on what you're I mean, doing, you can have probably. a boring freaking trainer, but... Um, 
it's you're, you're not going to have as good of an experience. Right. You'll yeah. have a better dynamic. And that, that's you, the you problem a is a lot of people get sold on the experience and they forget to check for education. Or, or, or And when I say education, I just mean knowledge, uh, uh, intelligence, their ability to train properly and effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get sold – on a trainer because they ha- they like them so much. Right. And that's a, it's a good thing, but it also can be an inhibiting thing if you forget to, well, to check for and other it, yes qualities. And, yes and no. I, I get where you're going with that. And, I, and I'll say, I mean, I'm already turning this into a long one. Um, We're okay. It, the, the, the reality is, is um, they can spend their money however they want. If they like the guy because they like the guy or the gal, that's fine. You can spend your money, but realize that you're not getting your best. Yeah. You're not getting the best that you should get. Well, not should. That you could, could get, right, yeah. for for what you're putting your money out for, if that makes sense. And I, I think and, – And let's be fair. There are some people that are fit that just hire a trainer because they want to be accountable and they already know a lot. And maybe they even know more than their trainer. That's probably true. But they have an accountable – partner or an appointment that they have to be there for right. and someone that will there i've had people hire me just so that i will push them that makes sense they say i don't i don't care to learn anything i don't i'm, I'm happy with with where i'm uh for the most part with where i'm at but i want harder workouts i want to have a reason to show up to the gym because i value my health and i want to have a, a, I, I can't program my workouts for me uh, i don't not they're not necessarily even shooting for a goal but they're just like i don't know what to do but i want to have a kick butt workout right so they Right. That's why they hire. Which makes sense. Which and, isn't usually the case, but there right. there are clients that do that. And and the, again, and then you can hire whoever you want. Yeah, and I, and I feel like I, I almost feel like it doesn't really. If if you're willing to spend your money on the trainer that's in front of you, sweet. Uh, that's that's the, to me that's irrelevant. But like I said, when we were talking, when this is why it popped into my head so much is when we were talking scoliotic patterns, we're talking about um, uh, carpal tunnels, we're talking about uh, uh, gait patterns, we're talking about uh, alignment issues. Um, those are kind of the, in my opinion, that's something that that some of this stuff anyway, scoliotic patterns not so much, carpal tunnel not so much. But when you start talking gait patterns and you start talking about um, uh, uh, alignment issues in the body, if a trainer doesn't comprehend that, why go to him? Yeah, I, I, t- that's like I said, dude. That's why I want to start asking, bouncing questions off you because, I mean, I I I I've I've never really thought. Even well, that's not true because I, I felt that way with massage therapy, but it's licensed. You have to do that through the state. That's a different beast. Yeah. Which I and 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 on a side note, I want to see it go that way. I know that I I I know it would have been much harder for me, obviously. Oh, without question. To get into the industry had yeah, state, had I not state licensing been Absolutely. able to do a just a national accredited cert. But based off of what I've learned, it's something that needs to be regulated on that level for the, for the safety of people and. And to, for, for people to take trainers seriously. Okay, I agree with that. Because people look at trainers like, oh, that's cute. You're a trainer. What are you going to do? What What are you going to do after that? Like, are you just right. putting yourself through right. school? Like, right, right, you know, right, right. And, and some people don't look at them that way. Some people look at them as legit professionals. And I try to and they portray should. myself as in, as such as, and as, you as much are. as I can. And you are, dude. And, and, and again, I don't necessarily feel that way about all trainers. I don't necessarily think that all trainers, like you're saying, okay, I don't think that they're necessarily um, true professionals. I think... I mean, to be real, the average trainer. Yeah, yeah. I think I think th- to be real, a professional basically is anybody who's paid for what they do. So, are they professionals? Yes. Mm-hmm. Are they, in my eyes, a joke? Yes. And and do I dislike them? I mean, I, I there's a lot of trainers that I love to death that I think overall um, their knowledge base. I it's always been smaller than mine from the first day I met them. But I've never really needed a trainer because I grew up in it. Mm-hmm. And you've I, been studying this for decades. Oh yeah. I mean, old, yeah, old man. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You know, that's the scary thing is when you start talking about how long I've really studied this. I sincerely studied it when I was young, for probably you, ten to fifteen. You came years. into it at the perfect time because it's when really everything did. was developing. Yeah. You've gone through yes, you've You're gone through wrong. a period of studying where research was happening, certifications were being established. Um, uh, the change, uh, Russian the 19- developments, which are oh, huge. Dude, the Russian stuff happened even before my time. Well, yeah, extent. but but but, but let's, let's be real, okay? So when you're looking at it from again the bodybuilding world, and that's how I was bodybuilding. At it, obviously, I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> well, Joe 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 Weider was a big proponent of a lot of the stuff that was pushing it, and he is he is someone who perpetuated this stuff into a bigger beast. Yeah. That happened through the '70s and '80s. I mean, that's the time period for that. Was that's where it got really big. Was 
was in the 70s and 80s. Well, in the 80s is where it really came into its own. Yeah. The 90s, it started to die out in the general populace, okay? And so so if you start looking at the actual transition points, yeah, you're, you're not wrong because the 1980s is when a lot of the exper- experiments started to happen. And that's the reason why I have a problem when people really bash on bro science because, li- like you said, the majority of the 1970s was based on only bro science mentalities because they were all doing it on stuff that worked. Yeah. It was dynamically based. It was it was set up and did it work or didn't it work? And, and, and most of the scientific stuff that's come out and, and they've said that this works and that doesn't work. They're not right. And it's been slowly been proven to go back to the bro science stuff. But like I said, it's a cutting edge mentality because you're, 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 you're going outside of, of, a, uh, of a box world. But, okay, to, to side with you a little bit on the licensing. Because I, I, I don't think it should be licensed. I don't necessarily. Oh, really? Why is that? Because I think it's restrictive to a point where it doesn't need to be. Because I don't think the damage thing. I think, think? The, I think the protection aspects need to be there, okay? Do I think that a trainer should be um, insured? Absolutely, for the nature of protecting the person that he's. Do you training. think that should be like a legal mandated? I thing? think that should be a legal mandated thing. I agree with you on that. So where where would you find the stand? Where would this this standard be for you in between what? Because you said you you very you look you know down upon many of these certifications that are nationally accredited. I look down. I look down. But you just say it trainers. shouldn't. You shouldn't be licensed necessarily. Where where's that? Where's that line? Okay. Or is that standard? And that's that's a fair question to me. Is it a matter of experience hours? Is it a matter of internship? No, not at all. Shadowing? Is I it... think shadowing and internships, um, especially at a gym level, is is phenomenally good for the trainer themselves because it sets them up to be able to, to move forward and, and have an idea of how to use it. Yeah. Because I don't think you're you saying get that for the shadowing sure. trainer or the trainer who is the shadowing trainer. The guy who's shadowing. The the one who's learning. The one who's Not the one who's leading. Right. Because it's also very uh, educational experience for the one who is leading. Because they're they're forced to teach this other person. The knowledge base has to change. That makes sense because I mean I've tried – I haven't haven't had someone shadow me in a long time. Yeah. But when I have, I'm immediately on my game more. Because I'm trying to teach this trainer how to be a trainer, so I'm more aware of how I'm training the that client. Even more, not not to say that I'm not aware when I'm training them, but it's like okay, I'm trying to teach this person right. how to be a trainer, and so it co- it causes you to me. have more recall and and, and and explain more application. And, and it's always it's always from being someone who's always been a proponent of teaching. I'm I'm, I'm always someone that's that seems to be trained continually. That's and you again, you know that because self educating. Is that what you mean? Not self educating, but training other people. You know that because I oh, work yeah. with you, and I've worked with uh, in my job. That training is was a big key component for me out for many years. And yeah, but um, so and I do that by nature. You know, it's like you said. I I train the people I train to understand. I, I want one of the, my. Uh, uh, I'll even say his name, Chris Beesland. When I was training him. Like I told him up front, I said, I want you to understand enough that you can train other people and understand yeah. where you're going. Yeah. I think that's important. Absolutely. Not I just tell... self-sufficiency. Have the capacity to go beyond self-sufficient to help others to do the same thing. That's true. Yeah. And understand the vision. Self-sufficient is I... far, dif- far less than sufficient enough to train others. Absolutely. And that's what I wanted him to be. And so that's when I was showing him. That was that was some of the things. He already had a pretty big basis on how to train himself. But that was one of the things I really wanted him to have information in his head about. Um so yeah, I, I I can see that as being an important aspect of this. Do do I think that needs to be a state license thing? No, I think I think as 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 a um... okay. Does it need to be a state license? Well, Not necessarily. I think, and it's hard. I don't necessarily think it needs to be traditional. It can be vocational. It can be some other form that. of training. That's fair because that's, that's what fair. that's what these certification programs are. Is they're considered vocational training yes, of, they are. of a kind for sure. But I do think there needs to be a higher standard. Any to, cert- the, to the point where it it maybe uh, it does require a a four year degree. I mean, what you have is you have you have nationally accredited, you have non accredited certs, accredited certs, diploma programs, one one year, two year, four year degrees. I can then, see that. And, I can know, see that. But see, that. my issue with that is is okay, and and and, I, and I, I'm not saying that they're not educated in this way anyway, but but. To get a four-year degree, you have to have certain knowledge bases based on certain things that I think are completely irrelevant in personal training. Oh, I agree with you on that. We get that's a whole other argument about the the schooling systems. That's that's the reason why I have an issue because with that. like 
uh, there's there's other countries that get you sp- start you down a specialized route before you're in, pretty much when you're in high school. Oh yeah, and, or before. Oh yeah, and, and I think I agree with that more. But but see, education reform is totally different. No, and I was just gonna and say, I agree because I've I've done that where I've had to accomplish general all these generals that are completely of irrelevant. Of course, and that's what I was like. No say. offense, I think music and art is great, but. Why am I taking a historical music course when it has that. zero application except maybe absolutely. relating to a client absolutely. Uh, uh, to personal training? I, I, it's, it's, it's a well, dumb idea, I think, in order for me. Your generals should be taken care of in, in elementary, junior high, and high school. That should well, be and, again, and again, even if you have somebody who has no formal education at all, didn't go to elementary school, didn't go to junior high school or, or, or whatever, secondary school, and, and didn't do a high school level – they didn't do any school, okay? okay? And you throw them in, and they know what they're doing, and they're training the guy okay, to but do what he's doing. You, Hold, but let me finish what I'm thinking. If he speaks poor English, it's irrelevant to training somebody correctly. So do I think that it needs to have that? That's like I said. That To me, to me, that kind of stuff is irrelevant when you're doing certain things. Someone who specialized in doing something like, I don't know, welding, and they, they, they're amazing at welding, it, it's irrelevant if they speak. Yeah, but personal training, you're training someone. You have to be able to communicate. If you can communicate without using correct English... It doesn't matter. That's difficult. Are you, you're saying English period or just no, correct grammar? I said correct grammar. You said a guy who doesn't speak English. I didn't say speak. Well, he doesn't speak something correct, like that. precise English. Okay. So I thought you meant like a guy speaking Spanish can teach an English speaker. It would be difficult to do that. Yeah, and I, and quite, I give yeah, you that. Just because you couldn't explain the movements. You have to be able to explain so the movements. So my point is, okay, maybe it doesn't have to be a four-year four degree or a state license, but some – a universal standard has to be established and nationally accredited is not quite there yet. Well, and I was going to say a certification, a certification should have a better standard than it does. Yeah. Is my, and I agree with you on that completely. I think it should, I think it's, it's difficult because, because like I got in, like I said, I was able to get into doing what I'm doing now because it is less regulated. Yes. And so it's it's hard for me to take that back because because I'm grateful for that opportunity. Um and I think that the the right type of trainer with the right mentality can go into there and be an exceptional trainer very, I agree very early too. on. I agree with that too. But they're few and far between. And I absolutely agree with that. That's that's very true. So All right, anyway, we probably should Hold on real quick. That's that, that's ours, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Small, small interruption. <laughs> um, so we had a friend. Yeah, but anyway, um, D- does that make sense? No, that, that makes perfect friend. sense. I think I think we're kind of on the same page that there needs to be a higher standard established. We don't know quite what that is yet, but the the majority of trainers I think, have yet to prove themselves. And I agree with that. I think I think especially the people who are listening to us talk about this, anybody, especially if they're listening through this entire episode. Um, should be self-educating. If they're not, if they don't have an understanding, they don't have to necessarily be able to program. I, I think of one of the biggest reasons to go to a trainer, in my opinion, is to help you to to see past yourself mm-hmm. and to motivate. Okay, and, and if they can do those kinds of things and keep you on the right path and be able to correct where you're deficient. Okay, those are the three things I think that are really required for a trainer. Um, if they can do that, you should probably go to a trainer. I think trainers are great. Like we've talked about before, I think trainers should have trainers. They, yeah. It's not yeah. They, the knowledge base, but you, if, you, if you recognize that they're not going down that path, because that's an education side yeah. on our side of it as, 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 as someone who's trying to learn what they're doing or work through something, if they're not seeing the education coming in their direction, they should change trainers. Sure. I, think, I think that's what it comes down to ultimately. And I think, I think the, the, uh, the personal training world and, and the health industry in general – um, stems on on manipulating um, lack of education of the p- populace, and and the majority of what we're talking about, in whether our, it's intentional or not, or not, it, right? Because some some people don't intend on that happening, but they're ignorant and Absolutely. they don't realize that they might be telling someone the wrong thing, or, Absolutely. or that they're not telling them the right thing, right? Or they're just not getting them results because they lack a certain level of knowledge. Exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and 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 in fairness, again, when when you start training, well, let, let's I mean. I, I, like I said, I don't want to make this two hours long, but um, when you start working towards uh, uh, like fat reduction, um, not necessarily weight loss, but fat reduction, um, if you do it too rapidly and, and, you, and you start to have um, a massive fat reduction, then you're going to have a problem with your skin. And, 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 and it won't come back because your integument, integument system is not going to have the same resiliency yeah. 
once it's lost its its capacity because of stretching too far. If you do it slowly and over a course of, of years or, or months at least. Well, <clears throat> skin elasticity will eventually dissipate depending on how long you're obese or overweight significantly. Agreed on that too. That's true. Eventually but, but, but it the will speed, stay stretched out. The, and not necessarily. If you go slow enough, from from, from my experience, now granted, okay. again, this, again. This isn't, yeah. No, we're not talking about something scientific. But, but from what I've watched it, the slower you can go backwards, the more your skin will react correctly because it will work with you. Yeah, but some some you're right on that. Some training, some trainers don't um, the, the their approach to training, though effective, might not be as uh, it's not full body. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's not full as, body. As comprehensive. It's not comprehensive in, in its dealings. And, 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 again, and again, I have a problem with that, with, with, with trainers in general, because they're not perceiving that. Most it's, trainers it's don't diff- perceive that. I will say it's difficult, though, because it's going to be difficult to establish a more universal standard because it is such a vast Agreed. Ed- field in terms of education and and And, and like we said, all the, the science is changing so quick. Yeah. Like, like. Yeah, it's just so many facets of the industry and, and the body and things like that that, mm-hmm. that it would takes it takes quite a bit of ed- education to f- have a comprehensive knowledge. Absolutely, um, and and I don't mean I'm just I'm just saddened by the by the state of 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 the health industry in general because I feel like um, like I said manipulation for for supplementation is crazy because I don't necessarily say that any of the supplements are not usable, but you have to have a point. Yeah, um, uh, but but yeah, the same with trainers. Bluntly, the same with physical therapists, the same with medical doctors, the same with um, with even massage therapists and, and chiropractic, because their knowledge base is so stinking minuscule in what it needs to be to actually work with these people, and that's the reason why. I but see, to that's have this conversation. To yeah, extent. and that's where you got to say, okay, where where do we draw the line between skimming the surface of of many components of health and having a general knowledge, and then being a specialist and and knowing when to refer out of your scope of practice. Right. And I think that's a problem for trainers I agree is they that. don't look at themselves as having a scope of practice. I agree with that. They think anything that's fitness related they can handle. And and I have referred people uh, to other people. Not I haven't yet had a situation where I've had to refer to another trainer. Right. Actually, no, I have. Actually, I have. I have given clients to other trainers. Now that I think about it. Um, because because they were because uh, they were a better fit whether it was personality or whether it was education well personality but I get, that's refer- a different nature I, when when and I'm a nu- I specialize in nutrition mm-hmm. I don't have my state license or yet but but I want I want to do that and, that, and to I'm, me, like I said, I'm that's, above that's definitely different. above average on on nutrition I agree education with you completely I know when to refer to a registered dietitian and I've done that and my client went on to see better results without me. And that's fine, but I knew when to do that, and I pract- I, I practiced cared, a good scope of practice. Right? That you cared, and that, yeah. that, that's that. Trainers I, don't do that. I, I agree with you. I think that is an absolute. Again, dude, Many that's the reason don't. why. That's another reason why I think you're such an oddity in this. Is, well, is thank you. <laughs> I guess it's weird to be called an oddity and like it, but 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 yeah, dude. I, I think that you you've got you've got a different viewpoint that is that is far superior to the average person that does this. And, and, and it's because of the nature of the beast. You actually are looking at a full body psychology look on these people and you're trying to work with them. I, that's, I mean, that's the reason why when we started to talk about doing this, Taylor and I have gotten to be pretty good friends about this kind of stuff for years now because, because we both have a similar viewpoint overall with this. It's not that we necessarily agreed on everything with this stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and that's okay. You know, I just think the education. But we're is we're ridiculous. constant students. Yes, we always want to learn, and we're always willing to uh, uh, put our egos aside to listen to what others have to say. I can't wait till we can pull doctors in here, and uh, and and massage therapists, and chiropractors, and and, and have a real discussion, endocrinologists if we can get them. You know what I mean? Like because because guess we'll just learn more. I agree with and that. Our paradigms will be shattered often, and, I, I, and I we'll be no able to teach them too. Right? I have no problem with that. Yeah. But I have a suspicion that, that unless they're open minded, which is going to be rare, well, that we have to pull the right people. I and I agree with that. I, I agree yeah. with that. Completely. But and 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 to wrap it up, um, yeah. I don't. If, I know there's trainers listening, um, and, which is sweet. And and I we don't want to offend you. If if you're freshly certified, or if if you've been certified for years and you and you never continued education per se. We're not trying to harp on you. Well, and that what, doesn't what, necessarily what, mean that you're bad either. No, it, and it doesn't. You're right. It doesn't mean that you're a bad trainer because you haven't done that. But I think it's it's a, it's, it's a characteristic of a great fitness professional. And I think that if someone wants to be considered one of the best or become exceptional or truly help more lives, that's ma- the majority of people got into the industry that are exceptional. They got into it because they want to help change people's lives. 
then I feel like you should hold yourself to a standard to continually educate yourself. Like I, I have considered getting the top, in my opinion, the top five uh, nationally accredited certifications for personal trainers, not because like – because I'm a perfectionist, to be honest. Yeah, I am that's curious. That's, I agree with I that. am really curious. I would invest the money because I'm curious mm -hmm. about do they teach a different way? Do they teach a different philosophy? What's their approach? What's their modality? What What's their nutrition approach? I am willing to pay my – invest money into those certifications even if I only gain one fragment of knowledge right. because I love learning about this. Yes, which – this is very true. And I also would like to be able to point trainers in the right direction to say, okay, you want to get nationally accredited, nationally certified – what do you want to do? Which route do you want to go? Okay, I would pick this one, not that one, because that's more applicable. Right, and I, I and, can see and, that. And, but I can see that. Mo most trainers are not going to do that. Mo many trainers uh, like would kind of scoff at that, like, why would you waste your money? But I don't look at it as a waste. And I think that's the kind of mentality people should have is well, I, any any education you can get that's applicable to your field is is – just shows your work ethic. Well, and I'm going to do a semi advertisement for us on this this moment right here because I'm, I'm going to talk about programs. So, so here, here's my problem with the general uh, look on programs. Everybody's going to tell you they have the best program in the world. Everybody will say that. And 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 to be honest, you know, the average person he, they can go to any of the programs and they're going to get results. You know, as long as they're not any, right. but many, many, most, large majority, especially if they're new. The oh, yeah, the yeah. The people, yeah, especially yeah. the people are new. But, but the reality is, okay, um, there is there's a, there's a reason to do certain things at certain times. Yes. And, and our goal, because like, like we've talked about before, right now we're looking at putting out programs to, to make it so that people are educated. Our, our goal is to educate um, people in, in this actual field and, and, and make it so they have um, – enough education that they don't necessarily need to go to a trainer to find something out. And if they do go to a trainer, they know what they're talking about, probably more so than the trainers. Our goal is to set up something that's going to be able to help that way. I'm not, I don't want to bash on anybody else's programs or anything like that. And I'm not suggesting because ours isn't done. We're taking our time to do this thing and we're testing it ourselves because we want this to be something that is, is special for everybody. You know, we're, we're working on a book we're working on multiple books, technically, um, and and we're trying to get a series going on on programs, not just for a financial reason, but we want to actually give stuff so that you guys are educated more, and and so that you guys can can deal with the stuff that we're talking about in this episode. We'll just say that we've had we've been talking about releasing a program for about three months, and we've continued to go back to the drawing board yep. to tweak it because we, yeah, we want to make some money, but we care more about an effective program for you than we do about that first. Yep. And that's why we keep doing this. And, and, and there's uh there's very, very few trainers or programs out there that will do that for you. Right. And we want you to learn and know what you're doing and take that knowledge with you for the future. You know, and, and I don't, when we get this done, we're not going to, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not hacking anybody who does this kind of stuff, but we're not going to go out and we're not going to, ram it down your throat but we, we, we want you to understand that that this is all very important to us that we, you guys get the right information so uh we've gone we've gone to a point where i think we really need to quit um for multiple reasons but um but to I, quit the episode not yeah quit training. Not, not quit training <laughs> not 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 quit doing podcasts we're past an hour and yeah. we've got our we've got our point across to you and showing you that we're passionate and we want to help <laughs> yeah exactly what hopefully I'm we've to say. given you some clarification on the personal training industry um one one last thing that that i want to throw out there though is um we thrive on questions we want yeah. questions we would love questions that we don't have answers for um, it, Sue, it makes us all better right I, we love when you ask us a question that we don't know the answer to because it pushes us to be better absolutely and, and there there's there's trainers out there i i have yet to see an example uh of of a, of a, of a fitness authority get asked the question admit that they don't know the answer and then say i'm gonna go find it for you right. i have yet to see that example and that's what we want to do for you because we're not going to sit here and tout that we're the top experts we know a lot and we know a lot more than the average well, people. Well, and I, we watch studies. I, I, I but, love, like I said, I follow Jake Wilson. I follow, yeah. follow uh, uh, oh my gosh. I'm, oh. Uh, um, um, Lane Norton. Lane Norton. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I follow a lot of these guys that I actually have a lot of respect for. I may disagree with some of their, their perspectives even. But, uh, but I have a basis behind it because I'm educated in it. That being said... 
you we're going to go find the answer to something if we don't know it. But I guess through through legitimate means. But I guess my plea to you people at this point is, you know, and, and again, I'm going to give a shout to Sue on this really heavily. Is I want hard questions. Yeah. I want questions that we go. I have an answer for that, but I want to be more accurate in it. I'm going to go search for it. I don't have an answer for this one. I'm going to go search for it. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to do this stuff out of the top of my head because the honest truth is I've got a lot of knowledge in my head, but we, we, we want to have it be accurate. So we're going to pull from knowledge sources, Yeah, but we want that desperately. And that's, that's so the thing do. is, is a lot of trainers don't know where to look. We at least know where to look I agree for with accurate that. information. Yep. And most consumers don't know that either. So just doing a Google search won't necessarily give you the right information or it'll give you conflicting information. Well, there's a lot of information on the internet. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it's not true. And so and so that use us as a, as a funnel to filter in the correct information, whether it's coming from our mouths or others. And uh, and we'll we'll find it for you. Anything else, Shane? Um, no, I don't know. We will continue perpetually. We could talk forever. I, I yeah. can stay here doing this no, for hours. We're, we're done. <laughs> we got to wrap it up. Yep. So, uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. We love you. We care about you. Ask us questions. Please. And uh, we'll see you next episode. See ya. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Shane and I hope you learned something new and exciting today about your own health and fitness. Head over to metabolicradio.com. There you'll find our bios and our results-driven programs that are designed to help teach you everything you need to know when it comes to getting real permanent results. You can also sign up for our newsletter to get free weekly updates. To chat with Shane or I, just email us at taylor at metabolicradio.com or shane at metabolicradio.com. We would love to hear from you. You can also join the conversation on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and search for Metabolic Radio Private Forum. There you can request to join the group. We would love to add you to the conversation and answer your questions on the show. And hey, if you like our podcast, please help us grow our community by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. We would really appreciate your help. Thanks again so much for all your support and your listenership. Now go out there and spread the good word of fitness.